says the man of God blessed us. The man of God blessed us last week. He was saying we must have the fourth man. We must have the third man. We must also have the second man in our lives. Uh, as we start this journey, <clears throat> we are still at the foot of the mountain. We are praying that we are going to have a mountaintop experience. We will give over to Dr. Rick. Dr. Ray Cases, we will ask you, Doctor, if you are there, to please unmute yourself and uh, to take us through the word of God as you did last week in a very mighty way. We have prayed for you. We are still praying for you that God be with you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. I greet you all. I wish you a good morning, all of you in South Africa and all of you across the world. I want once again to thank God for this powerful ministry where men and women of God come very early in the morning uh, to just come and seek the Lord in prayer. This was the habit that Jesus had and he succeeded, and it is the habits of successful people. You are on the right path, ladies and gentlemen, and to seek the Lord is never in vain. And so I want to invite you so that we can listen to the word of God. The message this morning is titled, Whichever Way It Goes, don't lose focus. Whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. Whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. I want to bring to your attention Philippians chapter 1, verse 18, and Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Apostle Paul says this, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, says that, what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of these, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Then Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, he says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Verse 21, he says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about focusing, because we say whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. To focus is to give something all your attention. To focus is to refuse to be distracted by lesser important matters. To focus is to identify what is most important among important things. To focus is a sign of a person who is decisive. Because you cannot focus unless you are a person who can make decisions and say, I will not focus on this, I will not focus on that, I will just focus on this particular matter. When we begin focusing, we begin succeeding. And there could be somebody listening to me today whose greatest challenge is that they are not focused. They give their attention to everything. They, 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 are, they give attention to this, to that, to the other one. At the end of the day, everything has started, but nothing has succeeded. We need to focus. And the message today is whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. Apostle Paul writes several things to the church in Philippi. He begins by clarifying some contentious issues and focusing the church on what matters. His message is that they must remain focused whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. An issue had arisen in the church in Philippi about the many preachers who were preaching amongst them. Some seemed genuine and others were outright false preachers. The church had focused its attention on whether the preachers are false or, or whether the, the, the preachers are genuine. The discussion in the church shifted sharply to these two groups of preachers. And Paul realizes that the church has lost its attention from the gospel. He therefore writes to dismiss that hot debate by stating that what matters is that at the end Christ is preached. 
Whether out of false motive or genuineness, the church should be glad that by all means, the gospel is spreading and that should be the focus of the church. And so he's telling them that whether there is bad motive or good motive, he says that, listen, as a church, we must be focused on what matters. Whatever happens, whichever way things go, don't lose your sight of the ball. We are here to play ball, to play football. You can't look at the fans. You can't look at somebody who is carrying a big sign with a message to you. Look at the ball. Don't lose focus. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. He's saying that there are too many preachers. That is true. And there are so many with false motive. That is true. There are so many with genuine motive. That is true. But he says, focus on the fact that whichever way Christ is preached. To discuss the motives of a person is wrong and self-defeating. God has not given us the ability to read and establish anyone's motive. Only God can expose motives. Therefore, if preaching is out of false motive, it's none of your business. If in the end, the gospel has spread, that is what matters. And that is what we should focus on. And so he tells them, whichever way, whether out of false motive or good motive, it's none of your business. Just rejoice that the gospel is being preached. If we focus on who has false motive and who is genuine, we may end up stopping the work we should focus on. The debate will replace the work, the efforts will move from preaching Christ to scrutinizing preachers. If that happens, our core business will suffer. Therefore, whatever happens, don't lose focus. He tells them, I don't want you to turn out to be now homiletics professors who are now marking which preacher is doing what he says, don't lose focus, don't lose focus. And so the next issue that Apostle Paul raises, again, is about focus, just the following verses. He talks about the suffering that he's going through and the suffering that others are going through. And there is the fear of death. There is the concern that Apostle Paul may die in prison from where he's writing from. And so some are almost giving up faith. Others are concerned. Will persecution destroy the church? And so he addresses the concern for life and death. And he says, listen, Whichever way this ends, if I end up alive or if I end up dead, it does not matter. If at the end Jesus Christ is glorified, that is what matters. Don't lose focus. If death comes, just remain focused. If life comes, just remain focused. Paul tells the church that what matters is that Christ is exalted. If Christ is exalted because Paul is still alive, he says, that is okay. But if Christ is exalted by the manner of which Paul dies or by the fact that he is dead, he says that is still okay. What matters at all times is that Christ is exalted. And that is our focus. He says, don't be so concerned that you will die, you will leave this behind, and you, will be, you, you, you are not ready to die for now, you don't want to die. He says, if you change your focus to that, you lose the ball in the game. Focus on the fact that whoever gave you life can decide to end it or stretch it whichever way he must be glorified. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have understood what Paul was telling the church. Now let's come to ourselves. We also have situations that vary. Sometimes our prayers are answered the way we expected and sometimes our prayers are not answered the way we expected. Whichever way, don't lose focus. Whether your dreams come true or not, don't lose focus. Whether the issues are resolved or not, don't lose focus. Whether you experience a happy life or not, don't lose focus. Whether you are lonely, single, desperate, or you are in a good relationship and happy, don't lose focus. Whether in need or not in need, don't lose focus. We need to remain focused. When we look around us, there are people who are singing to make money and there are others who are singing because they genuinely love the Lord. Don't lose focus that the Lord is being praised. 
When you look around us, there are those who have come to ministry because they want money. There is nothing else they could do. And there are those who truly and genuinely love the Lord and they love serving the Lord. Please focus on the fact that whichever way Christ is being preached. Don't lose focus by having excessive concern about fake people around you. Don't lose focus because of haters who even hated Jesus for right doing. Don't lose focus because somebody has falsely accused you. Don't lose focus because of one or two failures, because failures come before success. Don't lose focus because of mistreatment, somebody has mistreated you. Don't lose focus because of one setback or even two or three. Don't lose focus because of one event or one person. As life goes by, good and bad things must happen because we are in a sinful world. So don't lose focus is the message of the Lord to you today. Whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. Don't lose focus on your studies. For those of you who are going to school, just because maybe the school doesn't offer good food, or maybe you don't have good friends, or because this teacher is bad, or because there is this or that, don't lose focus. Just remain focused. Stay focused on your goal and achieve your studies and get out of that school. It's not a permanent place. Don't lose focus in your business and eat all your profit. Reinvest and expand your business. Stay focused on being bigger with a higher income. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus on your health, which is your primary capital. Eat well, rest enough, work hard. Don't lose your focus even on your marriage. Do not be distracted by erratic spouse conduct. Maybe your spouse has done this or that, then you lose focus on the fact that you are supposed to love your wife or submit to your husband. Then you now start concentrating on small fights. You are losing focus. Don't lose focus. Stay focused. Don't lose focus on finding and being found by the right person if you are, if you are single. Don't lose focus. Even when you are being ignored, rejected, those are normal things. Stay on course. Don't lose focus. What happens and what doesn't happen shouldn't derail you from your urgent personal goal. Whichever way it goes, don't lose focus. If you are in business, your goal is profit. Don't lose focus. Just because one customer misbehaved, don't close down the shop just to fight a customer. Focus on the money they give you. If you are saving money, your aim is to accumulate more. Don't lose focus by getting tempted to bet or unplanned purchases, whichever way, don't lose focus. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get into prayer this, this day, I want to ask you, don't lose focus. The answer to your prayer or lack of answer to your prayer should not lose your focus on the fact that we have a good God who has planned greater things for us than even just a response to the prayer. Don't lose focus. And so I have one prayer today that the Lord may keep me focused in all aspects of life, that I may be focused when it comes to health that I may be focused when it comes to social issues, that I may be focused when it comes to financial issues, that I may be focused when it comes to academic issues, that I may be focused when it comes to my spiritual life, so that whatever happens, as Apostle Paul says, whether they preach well or preach poorly, I'm focused. Whether I have life or I have death, I remain focused. My prayer today, ladies and gentlemen, is that I will remain focused in doing the will of God. Dear God of heaven, may you keep me focused and may you keep this brother and sister focused. Bless my focus that it may yield fruit in each season. We pray that God may keep us focused. Let's pray. Our dear heavenly father, we pray for focus. We scatter our thoughts too much. This happens, we jump here, we jump there. We pray that we will remain focused so that whatever happens, we will remain focused. We will not change our focus on Christ. We will look at Christ all the way. We will look at you, the glory of your name and we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will bless us. When we focus on your kingdom, may all other things come to us. And so as we go into session of prayer, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, 
that keep us focused. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.